This video is an excerpt from our SR Lounge premium workshops. To learn more or purchase, simply go to srlounge.com forward slash store. My name is Pai and enjoy the video. In this video, I want to talk about cropping. Now, cropping is another one of our four C's that go into our artistry component. But here's the thing. Why aren't we including cropping over with the compositional kind of discussion? Aren't they one and the same? Well, here's my perspective on it, is that cropping is really different from composition, and that's why I've made them two different things. When I crop, it's really more for the overall story. It's what I want to include in an image, what I don't want to include. It's basically the story that I want to be telling. However, an image that is cropped a certain way is still gonna have a certain composition. And just because I'm cropping doesn't mean I don't have a composition. I would choose still the compositional theory or the composition that I like most for that particular image that helps me to tell and basically to sell that story. But the crop is really what we're deciding to choose within a frame. And to give you an example of that, we've set up a nice little picnic scene here. And for our picnic scene, we're gonna have our lovely couple come in in just a moment. I'm gonna show you how basically by cropping on this different scene, we can tell a whole number of stories. We can crop to show the entire scene. We can crop to show just little details. We can crop to basically show anything. And it really is going to help us overall in our final product, especially if it's going to an album or a website or a magazine spread. If we have these different crops and each one kind of tells a different story or a different part of our overall scene, we'll have a much stronger product in the end. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to bring in our couple and we're going to set them up. By the way, as far as our lighting, again, we've set this up to be against the sunlight. Um, Keith and Christian, why don't you guys come in here while I'm talking? We're we're gonna basically have them right here and they're gonna be backlit, but we do have a nice fill light coming in from the front. So it should look really nice. If we need to, we can add another silver side to kind of do a little bit of extra fill light and so forth, but we'll just kind of adjust and do that in the scene once we get this set up. So guys, why don't you come in and have a seat? And I'm thinking we have Keith on the side of the champagne and Christine on the side of the uh, pillows. Okay, so we've got them in position. Let's talk about what we've done here. Now, I thought it would look kind of cool. When we came across this scene, we had a great backlight set up. We have these beautiful trees and this branch right here on the right side. It does a really nice job of actually framing them. And I thought it looked nice and unique. It's different from, well, a standard or typical picnic scene we might do on the grass or on the beach or something. So it added a little bit of flavor by kind of doing it on these rocks. Don't you guys think so? Absolutely. Absolutely. They're disagreeing with me, just to agree with me. They don't, they're like, we're good, Pi. Just do your thing. <laughs> okay, so what we have is we have um, some flowers over here, some pillows. These pillows are just, I said pillows funny, but these pillows are just accent colors, okay? So we're using yellow accent colors because again, our scene, well, it's all green. It's all kind of this nice yellow leaves in the background. And if you even look at their dress and their clothing, we have kind of hints of yellow everywhere. So these are the tones that we're going for. Yellows and greens and tans, these are all analogous colors. Again, we're going for that kind of harmonious look in this scene. Also the whites, the whites on his clothing, the grays, uh, whites and the flowers. Again, these are all analogous colors of the scene. Everything's gonna kind of tie together and it's gonna come off with a really nice overall image. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to do a few different shots. We're going to do some, uh, well, not shots like drinks. We're going to take sips of our champagne and then we're going to take a few different photos. So what we're going to do is focus in on different areas. So for example, well, I'm going to go ahead and dial in my exposure first. I'm set up right now in a 35 millimeter. I'm actually going to switch this out to, um, let me switch out to the 50 first and then we're going to do a couple close up detail shots, get our exposure right and everything with the 50 and then we'll come back to this. Okay, so I've got my 50 1.8 on. I'm going to go ahead and just dial in an exposure. So I'm going to switch over to my spot meter real quick. And we're just going to do our same little tricks here. Let me hit I to bring up their little guide metering. We're going to go to spot. And that's perfect. Okay, I'm going to bring it up right over her face. I'm going to meter for her and just go right underneath her eye. And I'm going to get in really tight. Sorry, but here I'm getting in like, this is like creepily close, but the closer I get, the better it's going to meter because I just want her to, uh, just to meter the skin only. Okay. So the camera to meter the skin. So right around one, one sixtieth of a second. So right around one, one sixtieth of a second, I'm going to go down to F2 and then we're gonna go up to ISO 200. So let's go ahead and just bring this over to ISO 200. And let's take a quick shot just to double check and it looks pretty solid. It might be a tiny bit on the dark side. So what I might do, uh, every time I say dark side, I feel like I'm talking about Star Wars. I might be a little bit on the dark side. No, not Star Wars, like exposure, okay? So let me back up and I'm just gonna check out the overall scene. I'm gonna drop this to 1 100th at least until we're ready to start doing more candid type shots. When we're gonna do candid shots, I do need to speed it up. But for right now, let me just get a quick look at 1 100th because I do want it to be a little bit on the brighter side. So I'm actually gonna bring it up to maybe, let's go back to a 1 200th and just see if, 
Let's see how our histogram looks. And actually, at 1 200 of a second, it looks a tiny bit dark on the display, but in the histogram, it looks totally fine. This is exactly why I say to make sure that you're using the histogram, because this is one of those situations where I would kind of want to go a little bit on the brighter side and I'd end up blowing things out. Okay, so we're at 1 200 to F2, we're going to shoot at F uh, ISO 200. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to start out with some of these details. So let's do this. Let's go get in close on these strawberries and kind of on the flowers. These are those setup shots. They're the shots that are going to kind of tell the overall story. And, and let me have you kind of bringing a hand over like you're going to pluck a strawberry, okay? So just kind of bring the hand in. Yeah, actually grab one. Perfect. That's great. And then I'm going to go onto this side. We're going to get a little shot of our flowers. Perfect. Okay, so Olivia, why don't I have you bring that in? I wanna see what it looks like. If we just bounce a little bit of light, you're gonna have to stay outside the frame, so stay over on this side. But um, bring it all the way up, and I think we can catch a little bit of light from the scene and just reflect right onto them, okay? So go, there they are. Right there. Okay, perfect. That's great, that's a nice little difference there. That, that little kick or that little fill of light is gonna really kind of help make the scene that much more, <laughs> that much more better. <laughs> that much more better guys that's how it's gonna be all right what I'm gonna do is take a couple scene shots here so let's go ahead and I'm gonna crop so that we get the bottoms of their feet so this is a completely different crop than those close-up shots as you guys can see again we're telling the story of him them being in this little scene together I want you guys to look towards each other now that's perfect I'm gonna switch to go kind of with a little side composition so we're gonna shoot with them on the left third Love it. Interact with each other a little bit, guys. Just kind of, there you go. Perfect. Love it. Give me a little bit of playing around, a little joking around. Okay, I'm going to get a little bit low. We're going to shoot for these big, nice trees in the background. Guys, look at each other again. Kind of, there you go. Perfect. In the moment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to switch on to, I'm going to go for an 85 and I'm gonna crop a little bit tighter. With that last shot, we're kinda of going for a negative space. Now, negative space doesn't necessarily have to be just open space. Negative space can refer to just basically open side of the frame, or it can be like open clean space. We have basically the tree in that negative space, but it's still negative space where we can place text. We can place other things in the image if we're, say, putting together a card and so forth. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just kind of, uh, I want you guys to wrap up each other's hands a little bit. That's beautiful. See, with the shot, I'm composing it so that the hands are towards the left third of the frame. And then I'm going to get close. I'm going to do one where we're composing with the hands in the center of the frame. Okay, so this is what I mean with every crop still has its own composition. It's just the crop is telling the overall story. It's defining what we want to talk about. I think their feet are cute and I love their hands in the scene. So I'm going to go for a crop that kind of really shows off more of their clothing, more of the overall kind of scene, but not so much about them or their their faces it's just going to be like their bodies and their everything else in the shot the details okay we're going to go for the details so let's go ahead and what we're going to do is uncork the champagne again plan right so he's setting up i want to prepare i want to lock in my settings one two hundred of a second is good i want a little bit of action in the cork if i can get the cork kind of flying out it's going to look really cool that's a really hard shot to get but we're going to try and increase our chances of getting it by setting up everything being ready we're going to focus we're going to lock in anticipate where the action is going to happen and then we're going to try and get the shot so where are you going to cork it where are you going to be firing right, right at me <laughs> that would be an awesome outtake <laughs> actually should we try that <laughs> do it like right off the side of the camera Okay. Famous last words. Okay. Did you want to get any of this or no? Yeah, I'm going to get kind of your hands as you're doing that. And then let's have your hands in the scene still. So yeah, Christine kind of, there you go. There you go. I'm just getting the details of him basically opening up the bottle and everything. Okay. I'm going to hold up one second. Okay. I'm going to get, I'm getting a little bit back far so I can uh, get a shot of them as they're opening the champagne. So kind of like couple different focal lengths. If you have a zoom, it's great. But again, I want that prime look, so I've got to get a little bit of movement. So I just have them pause here and there so I can move back and forth. Okay. I'm going to speed up my shutter speed to 250 just to make sure that we can get this. And then let me, uh, that's actually it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I did not touch it. That was awesome. That was completely unplanned. He did not touch the cork. If you can plan, prepare, lock in the settings, anticipate, and ready for it, when it happened, we just went with it. I wasn't expecting either, kind of surprised all of us, but we got these hilarious shots that, 
you know, you probably wouldn't put them in a magazine, but they're awesome keepsakes for you guys. So, <laughs> okay. So we are done in our little picnic scene here. Hopefully this helps you all out to understand how cropping really changes the story of an image and how each crop has its own composition. And how in a scene like this, we can choose and we can crop in different areas to really add to an overall composition and tell a better story. Pretty easy, not too bad. We're getting a little bit of movement, but if I regulate my breathing, I think we can get that pretty steady.